In other news, a man is behind bars this morning after police say he shot his wife in the head. Police say this man, 29 year old Brandon Blanzinski, shot his 23 year old wife, Samantha. It happened yesterday at their home in the 400 block of Franklin Avenue in Sydney. Samantha was taken to a local hospital by care flight. Her condition is unknown this morning. For neighbors that know this couple, no one expected to see this home turn into a crime scene on Christmas Day. Everybody said that he shot her in the head and that he come out with his hands up and they put him on the ground and they took him to jail and they said when she came out, she was just covered in blood, that it was just horrible. Blanzinski is charged with felonious assault. Police say he could face more charges pending further investigation. If you know anything about this crime, you are urged to call Sydney Police. Meanwhile, Trotwood firefighters helped save Christmas for a couple and their two kids. Crews were called to this home on Touchstone Avenue just after four yesterday. When they arrived, heavy smoke was shooting through the attic. After getting everyone out safely, firefighters went back in and were able to rescue the presents. Damages are estimated at $30,000. We're told the fire started in the water heater. The exact cause is still under investigation. And in Camden, two people escaped from a fire. This broke out in the 10,000 block of Hole Road around 5 yesterday morning, and at noon it was still smoldering. The house is a total loss. We're told the folks living there are now staying with family. The American Red Cross is helping out with food and clothing. The cause of that fire remains under investigation this morning. Search parties have been out since Tuesday volunteering their time to help find Carson. It's a missing canine from the Wilmington Police Department. They combed woods near Center and Smith Rose in Clinton County yesterday. That's where Carson was last spotted. Carson is three years old. He got loose from the kennel while his police officer handler was away. After being loose for almost three full days now, Officer Jerry Pop is worried about his partner. Now he's in a big wide open area and in the big wide world and he's running scared. You know, everybody loves him to death. Uh, he's not just a dog. You know, he's a police officer, but he's also our friend. We're looking. Search parties plan to be back out there today. Now, if you have seen Carson, Wilmington Police want you to call 911. A Christmas miracle for one Dayton family after their home is robbed. On Christmas Eve, Shakenna and her family didn't have any gifts under the tree. Thieves kicked in her back door and stole all the presents for her kids. But after watching the story, our viewers dropped off gifts for the kids. I am very generous of everybody who helped me and my family, and God will bless them for blessing us. If you'd like to help the family, you can still drop off donations to the Vandalia Christian Tabernacle Church. Well, police often celebrate this season of giving by handing out parking tickets, but this year Cincinnati cops changed their tune. Cincinnati police allowed drivers to turn their tickets into Christmas gifts in exchange for 10 cans of food for the needy. You got a reduced fine, and in just five days before Christmas, the city received 3,500 cans while still collecting 13,000 bucks in fines. The food bank that benefited from this drive serves 20 million meals each year in Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana. 435 is our time on this Friday morning. Straight ahead, standing up to hackers. What Sony is saying about the release of the movie, The Interview. And now new hacking concerns, the widespread problems with Xbox and Playstations. All right, thanks, Chris. Some newborn babies got a special gift this Christmas. Volunteers have been sewing stockings for the Christmas babies at Kettering Medical Center. The nurses say they love delivering the stockings for the new bundles of joy. The latest family, the Kings, welcomed a bouncing baby boy into the world two days ago. It was very nice and very unexpected. It just kind of makes it a little more special here, being stuck in a hospital on Christmas, to, to have this and to know that this is something that he's going to have as well. Nice little memory for him. So far, about a dozen stockings have been handed out. Volunteers have been sewing them for more than 20 years. Former President George H.W. Bush, is uh, he spent Christmas in the hospital. Two days ago, the 90-year-old was taken to the hospital for shortness of breath. A family spokesman says 41, as they call him, is in great spirits. His wife Barbara and son Neil visited him for the holiday. Mr. Bush is the oldest living president. He struggles with Parkinson's disease and relies on a wheelchair now and a scooter to get around. The comedy movie The Interview hit hundreds of movie theaters across the U.S. yesterday. Now, this comes after Sony ditched plans to premiere the controversial movie following a hack into the company's servers and terror threats against theaters that were planning to show the movie. The U.S. has blamed North Korea for the cyber attack. Sony's CEO released a videotaped message yesterday thanking Sony employees for standing by the studio and the film. 
It was essential for our studio to distribute this movie, especially given the assault on our business and on our staff. This release represents our commitment to our filmmakers and free speech. The interview is also now streaming on several sites, including YouTube, Google Play, and Microsoft Xbox. And if you or your kids are gamers and use the Sony PlayStation Network, you probably noticed some hiccups in service. Well, a hacker group is now claiming responsibility. This comes as Sony released the interview movie for streaming on several digital platforms. Xbox Live and PlayStation are now reporting widespread network problems. Both Xbox and Sony say they're working to fix the issues. Right now, they're not saying what's causing the problem, though. Uber is uh, facing yet another roadblock to global expansion, but this time in South Korea. The CEO of the app-based transportation company is facing criminal charges now, stating that Uber is violating local taxi licensing laws. Since rental car companies are not supposed to simultaneously operate a taxi service. Uber has been facing a lot of bad press lately. Across the country, Uber has been accused of violating local tax codes. And in New Delhi, the company's commitment to safety is being questioned after Uber drivers have been accused of rape. 4.41, the time on this Friday morning, she collects Christmas trees. How many one woman has in her apartment? And it's a growing movement why one group went gift free this Christmas. You're watching ABC 22 Good Morning, now live streaming on ABC22Now.com.